nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka hopes to get a final verdict at the spring meetings of the IMF and the World Bank. Government says the inability to reach a consensus on restructuring with bondholders has led to more meetings in the future. Stock market all in the red in post Arugu trading. And Dialogue Asiata recognized by the Board of Investment. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening, thank you for joining us. State Finance Minister Shehan Seymasinghe says that Sri Lanka is looking forward to discussions on speedy debt resolution and restoring debt sustainability at the spring of meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, which will start in a few hours' time in Washington, D.C. Minister Seymasinghe is currently in the United States and spoke directly to the nightly business report on as to what the government hopes to achieve at the discussions. State Finance Minister Shehan Seymasinghe said Sri Lanka was looking forward to having discussions for a speedy debt resolution and restoring debt sustainability at the spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, which kicked off today in Washington. Minister Seymour Singer is leading the Sri Lankan delegation for this year's spring meetings that includes Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe and Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana. The delegation expects to conclude the debt restructuring negotiation with its private creditors and sovereign bondholders and formalize the already agreed deal with bilateral creditors by the end of the first half of this year. Sri Lanka also expects to receive the third tranche of the IMF by mid this year after the completion of the second review of a $3 billion loan program last month. On X, Minister Seymour Singer stated that they expect fruitful engagements that will pave the way for unlocking the next tranche of essential funding and a speedy debt resolution, which will enhance economic stability, confidence, sustainable growth, restore debt sustainability and ultimately improving the welfare of every Sri Lankan citizen. The President's Chief of Staff, Sagal Ratnayake, spoke to the media today and said that the several more rounds of conversations with Sri Lanka's bondholders would be necessary. Elaborating on the matter, Mr. Ratnayake said the reasons for more discussions was the inability to reach a possible agreement on two factors regarding debt restructuring efforts. President's Chief of Staff Sagala Ratnayaka said that in the relevant discussions, issues arose with the bondholders regarding four matters. Although they were able to reach an agreement on two issues, they failed to reach an agreement on two issues. However, he further mentioned that a round of discussions will be held in the near future regarding the relevant matters and was optimistic about solving the issues and reaching an agreement. The bondholders met in London at the end of March, while the contents of the meeting were not disclosed to the public. The Sri Lanka-Pakistan Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce recently paid a courtesy call to the newly appointed High Commissioner of Pakistan in Sri Lanka, His Excellency Major General Fahim Ul Aziz Hai. During the visit, both parties expressed their intention to collaborate closely for the future development of economic, tourism and investment opportunities between the two countries. Additionally, they discussed the potential for developing Buddhist pilgrimages to Pakistan which has been minimally explored but holds significant potential given the large Buddhist population in Sri Lanka. The visit concluded positively with both parties expressing optimism for future collaborations and mutual benefit. America's Boeing has briefed Sri Lanka's main international airport on the B777 airliner which is expected to enter service in mid-2025. Richard Weisvilla, the lead engineer of the airport operations at Boeing Airport Operations Engineering, conducted the technical session. Officials from Bandaranaike Airport and Sri Lankan Airlines attended the session. Sri Lanka has the ground handling franchise at the airport. Boeing's B777X model promises greater fuel efficiency with the 777-9 and can carry over 400 passengers in a two-class configuration. The aircraft has foldable wingtips, allowing it to be parked at airports that can accommodate earlier B777-style aircraft with a smaller wingspan. 
A short break now, uh, the latest from the Colombo Stock Exchange right after this. You're watching the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Let's get you the latest from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Now, despite it being a public holiday and not a mercantile holiday, the Colombo Stock Exchange traded with all indices ending in the red. The all share price index closed negatively, ending at 12,006.20, while the SP SL also ended negatively at 3,565.91. Let's get a breakdown of the market activity and for that let's go to Brendan Fernando from SC Securities. In today's market, the SPI closed at 11,996.78 points, marking a 36.32 point decline while the S&P SL20 ended at 3,565.91 points, dropping by 6.77 points from the previous session. The total trading volume reached 111.9 million shares with a turnover of 2.56 billion rupees. The top, the, top gain, the top gainers for the day were Ambient Capital, SMB Finance, UB Finance, York Arcade Holdings and Muller and Phibs, while the top losers were Paragon Ceylon, People's Merchant Finance, Millennium Housing, Developers, Pegasus Hotels of Ceylon and Hunas Holdings. LOLC Finance, Brown's Investments, Ambient Capital, Lanka Milk Foods and TJ Lanka recorded the highest share volume while LOLC Finance, Lanka IOC, Ambient Capital, LOLC Holdings and Brown's Investment led in turnovers. Sector-wise, software and services, consumer durables and food retailing saw an increase of 3.86%, 2.28% and 2.01% respectively, while commercial services, banks and healthcare equipment experienced a decrease of 1.42%, 1.08% and 0.97% respectively. Notable crossings included Melsa Corp with 350 million rupees, HMB with 282 million rupees and Halis Fabrics with 41 million rupees. In other news, Ali Holdings declared a dividend of 2 rupees per voting share and announced a trading halt. Vaskadu Beach Resort issued rights up to 276 million new voting shares, priced at 1 rupee and 80 cents per ordinary share. Well, as we just began the week, how will the stock market behave in the days to come? Here's Demand Matthews from First Capital Holding. Uh, the stock market has been on a continuous uptrend over the last couple of uh, weeks and uh, we've seen uh, to support it we've seen a significant decline in uh, bond rates and the banking rates and uh, with this investors has been uh, looking at uh, alternative investment uh, options at the moment so uh, with it uh, we've seen investors converting from fixed income and uh, to equity uh, options and with it, uh, we expect uh, this trend to continue uh, during the, the upcoming week as well. Uh, however, it might be on a slightly slower note because of the festive holiday season. On a contrary note, uh, we would like to also advise investors to be on a more cautious note uh, this week because uh, we've seen a bit of an escalation uh, in the war situation in the Middle East and that is likely to have a bit of a, a negative uh, outcome in the market because of the rise in oil prices and uh, that is likely to impact the country on a negative note and also corporate earnings on a negative note and uh, with this uh, there might be a medium term uh, negativity on the market however uh, at the moment uh, we would like to advise investors to uh, look at the market uh, on a way where uh, we would like to advise them to look at buying opportunities as the market uh, may trend to uh, come down and you can use it for bargain. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the US dollar today compared to last week. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the buying rate of the US dollar is 293.79 rupees, while the selling rate is 303.25 rupees. Here's a look at how the other currencies are traded against the rupee during the day today. A 
Let's take a short break. More nightly business news right after this. Welcome back. Dialog Asiata PLC was recognized by the Board of Investment as the most significant foreign direct investment contributor. This prestigious accolade presented during the BOI's 45th anniversary celebration underscores Dialog's unwavering commitment to driving forward Sri Lanka's economic development as the country's largest foreign direct investor with investments totaling 3.25 billion US dollars to date. The Board of Investment Awards program was incepted to recognize a wide spectrum of enterprises that have demonstrated resilience, innovative capabilities and remarkable agility in navigating the global marketplace. Held at the Presidential Secretariat, the ceremony saw President Ranil Vikramasinghe bestowing 30 awards on companies that have made noteworthy contributions to foreign direct investment, export performance and the broader economic landscape of Sri Lanka. Coca-Cola has announced Kaushali Kusumapala's appointment as the new country director for Sri Lanka and Maldives, effective from 1st of this month. Making history as the first Sri Lankan woman in this position, Kaushali succeeded former country director Pankaj Singha, who assumed the role in 2019. In this position, Kaushali will closely collaborate with bottling teams, customers, partners, consumers and external stakeholders in Sri Lanka and Maldives. With a career spanning back to 2009, Kaushali has garnered diverse experience having worked with organizations and brands such as Leo Burnett, Fonterra of Dairy and Domino's Pizza. David Pierce Automobiles Limited has officially started accepting pre-bookings for the all-new SUV in Sri Lanka. In a simple ceremony, the first 15 customers placed a deposit to pre-order their new vehicles, making the beginning of an exciting journey for both DPA and its customers. DPA recently announced its strategic partnership with Beijing Automotive Industry Holding, promising a new era of innovative, quality products and unparalleled customer service of Sri Lankan motorists. The company has now obtained approval to import and distribute this futuristic model with local value addition under the standard operating procedure for the automobile manufacturing and assembling industry and automobile component manufacturing industry in Sri Lanka as introduced by the Ministry of Industries. DPA will introduce two versions. BAIC X55 II Honor with standard features and BAIC X55 II Luxury with full options. Committing at the event, Mr. Rohan Adisana, a chairman and managing director of David Pires Group, stated The David Pires Group automobile legacy has always disrupted the local industry by introducing innovative vehicles, and the introduction of the new SUV in Sri Lanka is yet another significant milestone. Partnering with BAIC is a key highlight since the company has been a pioneering force in China's automotive industry, establishing joint ventures with major international players such as American Motor Corporation, Hyundai Korea and Mercedes-Benz. Sri Lanka drivers can now enjoy this sleek SUV loaded with advanced next-generation features that will transform their driving experience. The world's first cinnamon museum was recently integrated at the Mirisa Hills Estate in Hangwell, Mirisa, promising an immersive journey into the fascinating history, production and symbolism of cinnamon. The museum was ceremoniously declared open in the esteemed presence of Honorable Harin Fernando, Minister of Tourism, and Miles Young, the chairman of Mirisa Hills. From its ancient roots in Egyptian embalming rituals to its modern-day applications in cuisine and medicine, the museum offers visitors a unique opportunity to delve into the origins of cinnamon, bridging the gap between its production and consumption. Located amidst the scenic beauty of the Mirissa Hills estate designed by the renowned architect C. Algendron, the museum functions as a fully-fledged visitor centre, offering tours and demonstrations of cinnamon peeling, as well as the opportunity to savour local cuisine while staying amidst the lush surroundings. Miles Young in his remarks emphasised the museum's role in not only showcasing the difference between true cinnamon and its substitutes, but also celebrating the spices' inherent romance and legendary allure. 
We're going to take a short break and when we return, how did the global market perform? This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Asian shares fell as risk sentiment took a hit after Iran's retaliatory attack on Israel stoked fears of a wider regional conflict and kept traders on edge. A sense of nervousness swept over markets in Asia amid the escalating geopolitical tensions, with Japan's Nikkei's new tab sliding 1%, while Australia's S&P ASX 200 index new tab lost nearly 0.5%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index new tab was down by 0.63%. MSCI's Broadcast Index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan's new tab fell 0.7% after Iran launched explosive drones and missiles at Israel late on Saturday in retaliation for a suspected Israeli attack on its consulate in Syria on April. Despite the rally in the US dollar index, gold prices continue to trade with positive bias during today's dealings. On the Multi-Commodity Exchange, or MCX, gold rates today opened higher at 865 US dollars per 10 grams and went on to touch the intraday high of 6867 USD per 10 grams within a few minutes of the commodity market's opening bell. In the international market, spot gold price is trading around $2,360 per troy ounce, which is around 0.70% higher from its Friday close. Oil prices, however, hardly reacted to the news, as traders had largely priced in a retaliatory attack from Iran that would likely further disrupt supply chains that saw Brent crude futures peaking at $92.18 a barrel last week, the highest level since October. Brent was last 0.24% lower at $90.23 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 0.35% to $85.36 a barrel. That's it from all of us at the business desk here at Adadera 24. Thank you for your company. I will see you tomorrow at the same time. I'm Sina Maya Dune. Good night.